Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm going to show you how to make an intaglio style collagraph print using a plate made from sandpaper and cardboard. To make the plate itself, you'll need some stiff cardboard that won't bend, fold or crumple easily. You'll also need some sandpaper. I'm using a wet or dry fine grit sandpaper, but it's fine to experiment with different types and grades. You'll need a utility knife, a scalpel knife for finer cuts, a cutting mat, newsprint paper, a pen, a metal ruler, glue that will stick paper or cardboard together, a sealant, I'm using shellac flakes that I'll dissolve in methylated spirits and an old glass jar, an old paintbrush, printmaking paper suitable for intaglio type prints, I'm using Zircol 120 GSM laid etching paper, you'll need a piece of glass or plastic for inking up, etching ink, a paint knife, a piece of old rubber or a small piece of thick hardboard for spreading your ink, latex style gloves, an old phone book or newspaper, a rag, tarlatan cloth, which is a type of cheesecloth stiffened with glue and also sometimes known as scrim, and you'll need an etching press and wool blankets for your etching press. If you don't have access to an etching press, you can print very small intaglio prints with a pasta machine, so check out my video from a few years ago to find out how to make and print with one of those. To clean up you'll need a scraper blade, a rag and some vegetable oil or solvent free cleaning fluid. You can hand colour your prints any way you like but I'll be using a shellac based drawing ink that becomes waterproof when it dries as my prints will be stuck onto wine bottles and need to be water resistant. I'm using a fairly simple design for this print, so I just used a piece of scrap paper and a pen to figure out roughly what I was doing, so I knew what I'd need to cut out of my sandpaper. When I had the design roughed out, I flipped over my sandpaper and drew out all the parts I'd need on the reverse side. Now if you've got this far and you're wondering why on earth would I want to make a collagraph? What even is a collagraph? The answer is in the name. It's a print that you can make from collaged materials. Basically you get a stiff piece of cardboard, stick stuff with different textures onto it, seal it and then you can ink it up and make a print. There are all sorts of things that you can stick down to create different textures, but today I'm keeping it simple and I'm just using sandpaper. One popular method for creating collagraph prints is to use a product called carborundum, which is essentially the grit that's used to make sandpaper, but without the paper part. And today I wanna to see what happens instead when I use just actual sandpaper, because I think it will give some interesting contrast that I wouldn't get if I straight up glued carborundum grit to my cardboard. In future videos I'll go through some of the other techniques and methods that you can use to make different collagraph prints so be sure to subscribe if you're not already and while you're at it head on over to my Patreon page and support me there because that really helps with making the production of these videos possible. So I've drawn out all the elements I need on the back of my piece of sandpaper and I used a scalpel blade to carefully cut the shapes out. I'm going to stick these down onto a piece of stiff cardboard and I'm using the same kind of box board material that I use for book binding. If you want to use scrap cardboard instead, the type of material that's used as a backing on sketch pads is perfect. You'll want to avoid corrugated or softer types of cardboard as they'll collapse under the pressure of printing. You could use a cereal box or tetra pack type material but you'll need to be a bit more careful when you ink and print the plate as any accidental creases and crumples will pick up ink.
Before I cut my cardboard, I laid out some of the elements to make sure it would be wide enough. And then I cleared everything off and carefully cut it down to size. I coated my piece of cardboard with rice glue instead of gluing each individual little element because it can be quite fiddly to apply glue individually to lots of small pieces. You can use any glue that you like as long as it will bond the materials that you're sticking down to the cardboard. Be aware that your glue will likely add or remove some texture from the cardboard surface. You can use this to your benefit by adding texture with your brush strokes or by flooding particular areas with glue so that the ink in those spots wipes off more easily. It's totally worthwhile to take the time to experiment with different methods of making a collagraph plate because you can get a lot of different effects just by doing each step a little bit differently. You might have noticed that when I started sticking down my individual letters, I picked up the letter B first and automatically stuck it down the wrong way. Even after many, many years of doing printmaking, I still sometimes forget to mirror my elements on a plate. For most printmaking methods, you need to do everything in reverse, because the image flips in the process of printing the block or the plate. That was actually one of the cool things about using sandpaper to make this plate, I could just flip the sandpaper over, draw all my letters out normally, and then they were automatically back the front when I flipped them over to the sandpaper side. And the good thing about the rice paste that I use is that I was able to easily reposition the elements before they dried. Once I had all the pieces of sandpaper glued down, I decided to add a little bit of a border around the edge of the plate just for some more visual interest in the print. I did this by taking a scalpel blade and making some shallow cuts in the cardboard and pulling the first layer of cardboard away in a few of those spots. When I print this, the ink will sit in the grooves and cuts that I made with my knife. The final step in making a collagraph plate, once you have all your elements stuck down and the glue has dried, is to seal the entire plate. This is a really, really important step in the process. You're going to be rubbing wet ink into the plate and sealing it well helps stop that ink from destroying your cardboard. It also helps really seal the bits and pieces that you've stuck on into place so they shouldn't move around at all or fall off when you're inking and printing. You can use any type of sealant to seal your cardboard, but I like to use shellac. Now, every time I post a video where I use shellac, I get comments asking what on earth shellac is. You might know shellac better as French polish. It usually comes in this dry flake form like I have here, which you mix with methylated spirits, which I think is what some people call rubbing alcohol in some countries. And the methylated spirits dissolves the flakes into a liquid which you can then apply to things as a sealant. The shellac flakes themselves are made from sap left on tree branches by a beetle called the lac beetle, and these flakes are collected and processed into shellac flakes. You should be able to buy them from most hardware stores in the paint and varnish section, and I've also seen pre-mixed shellac and aerosol shellac mixtures available. I like to use shellac because it's a natural product that will eventually break down when I throw my plate away, 
and also because it's really thin and won't just clog up any of the fine details that I've cut into my cardboard. When I applied my first layer of shellac, I brushed away some of the sandpaper grit, but when I left it to dry and painted on the subsequent layers, this didn't happen again. I like to apply two to three layers of shellac and it's important to make sure that you cover the whole plate, including the back and the sides. I like to rest my cardboard on a jar lid when I do this so that I can paint the sealant all the way up to the edge without getting my desktop all mucky. Shellac dries really quickly, so I just left the block in the sunlight between coats to dry out before adding the next coat. As a final touch before the last coat of shellac was dry, I took a little cotton tip with some of the metho on it and I ran it lightly over all the pieces of sandpaper I'd stuck on just to make sure that I hadn't accidentally filled up the grit with shellac. And remember, if you don't have shellac and you have a different type of sealant at home, it's totally fine to use that too. And when everything is dry, it's time to print. Before you start printing, you'll need to get your paper ready. You'll need to use a printmaking paper that's suitable for printing etchings for a project like this. Etching papers are usually on the softer side and they don't have a lot of surface sizing. Your paper needs to be damp when you print as this process involves using a lot of pressure to push your paper into the indentations that are holding the ink on your plate. Dry stiff paper won't grab as much ink from your plate as well as a damp flexible paper will. I was originally taught to soak my paper in a bath for about 10 minutes before blotting excess water with newsprint, but that's not hugely practical unless you're in a specialised print studio with large sinks and running water, and I was taught a different way by a friend a few years ago. The day before printing, I dampened both sides of my paper liberally with a sponge or a spray bottle, and then I stack all the pieces of paper together and leave them overnight in either a Ziploc bag or a closed plastic container and the next day they should have soaked and dried out just enough that you can print while the paper is still damp, but without needing to blot away any excess water. I'm using intaglio methods to print this collagraph block, so I need to set my press with woolen blankets like I would for an etching or dry point print. For collagraph prints where you have a lot of different things stuck to your plate at different heights, it's good practice to use just one older thick blanket around the six to nine millimetre mark. But because this block is just thin sandpaper on cardboard, I'm using my regular etching setup, which is three blankets layered with the thinnest against the press bed, a three millimetre blanket in the middle, and a six millimetre blanket closest to the top roller of the press. Before I had my 1.5 millimetre blanket, I just used the combination of the 3mm and the 6mm blanket. The blankets help push your dampened paper down into the surface of your plate. 
Again, if you've stuck anything bulky on your plate, be very careful with your blankets and pressure because an oddly shaped hard item can easily cut into your blanket. I like to set my press before I start inking up so it's good to go when I'm ready. For a collar graph, I put a clean piece of cardboard in and I wind the top roller down until I feel it just hit the plate and then I crank it down a little bit more. To test the pressure, I put a piece of scrap paper onto the block and I run it through the press, checking that paper to see that the embossing from the edges of the plate is even on both sides. I've seen some people get decent collagraph prints using the back of a spoon method, but I've never really had good success with it myself as I find I just can't get enough pressure to get a good even print. Plus it's just a lot of hard work. If you don't have access to a press though, give it a go. Or you could build yourself a little press using a pasta machine, like I made in one of my old videos. To set the pressure on a pasta machine press, twist the little dial on the side to the closest you can get so that you can get your block through comfortably. I had good success making a little plate sandwich out of some thin wool felt and newsprint with my plate and printmaking paper held in between. To increase the pressure if I needed it, I just added some extra newsprint padding to the sandwich until I got a good impression. You'll need an etching ink to do this type of collar graph printing and if you don't have any etching ink I've got some affiliate links in the description below where you can go and buy some etching ink. I decided to trial my plate with a black ink and a blue ink because I wasn't sure what colour I wanted to print with initially. I also didn't know what consistency of ink I'd need so I trialled a very loose and easy to wipe black ink by Charbonnel, it's the 55981 black if you're interested, and a stiffer Prussian blue ink by Caligo. If you need to change the consistency of your ink, there are ways to do that. If you want it to be looser, you can add linseed oil, and if you want it to be stiffer, you can add magnesium carbonate powder. I didn't this time though. I only put out a little of each ink at first because I wasn't sure which one I'd go for. And the process here is to put a little ink out in, onto a piece of glass, perspex, plastic or tile and work it with an ink knife so that the consistency is good. Then you can use an eraser or a small piece of stiff cardboard to pull the ink across your plate.
When the ink has coated all the areas that you want to print, you take a piece of tarlatan cloth measuring about one metre square and you ball it up and use a pushing motion to simultaneously press the ink into the grooves on your plate and wipe excess ink away. Tarlatan is a type of open weave cheesecloth that's been stiffened with glue. When you've wiped enough with the tarlatan, you can take a sheet of old phone book or a piece of newspaper and wipe it against your plate with the flat of your hand to polish the surface of the plate without pulling ink from the indentations. I like to do all this while wearing latex rubber gloves to keep my hands clean because ink wiping can be a really messy process. Some people like to keep the plate on the surface of a table as they wipe but I find that I'm more comfortable when I hold it with one hand and wipe with the other. When I'm done wiping, I carefully remove the gloves so I can use them as many times as possible. I think I went through two sets of gloves making about 30 of these prints. After printing both colours, I decided that the black ink was far too loose and wiped back way too easily, and I preferred the colour and the texture that the blue ink gave me. So I mixed the leftover black ink into the blue ink and printed the rest of the edition. Printing the collar graph is pretty straightforward. You just put the plate onto the press bed, you put your dampened paper on top, you put a sheet of newsprint on top of that for protection, and you run the plate through the press. I'm passing mine through twice, but that's just because my room here is really quite small and it's easier for me to do it this way. If your print is smaller than your paper, you can draw out a registration sheet to go between the press bed and the plate so that you can print your image in the same spot on the paper each time. When I first moved here to Ireland a few years ago and met some other printmakers, I learned that not everyone knows that they can stack their prints to dry and flatten them at the same time, rather than letting them dry and flattening afterwards. I do this by putting down a sheet of my stiff cardboard, laying down a sheet of newsprint, laying out my prints on that as I pull them, putting another sheet of newsprint on top of that, followed by another sheet of cardboard and so on until I'm done. When I've finished printing the lot, I put any extra cardboard on top. I leave the prints in a stack for a day or two to dry and then unstack to finish them. When you pull back the newsprint on top of the prints, some of the ink will have transferred onto the newsprint, but it's minimal and it won't be noticeable on your prints. It might seem like a drag and really not very exciting, but cleaning up is one of the most important parts of printmaking, so I always go through it in these videos. It's important enough for printing at home, but it's especially important if you're printing in an open studio space that's shared with other people. The back of your plate will have left some ink on the bed of the press, which you can clean up using a rag and some cleaning fluid or vegetable oil. 
I use Sennelier's Green for Oil Brush Cleaner, which doesn't smell and is much better for the environment than traditional solvent. You can use the same solution to clean the ink off your plate and tools. Before wiping off the ink slab, scrape off any excess ink with a blade and then clean up the remainder of the ink with your cleaning fluid or vegetable oil and a rag. You can add colour to your prints any way you like, maybe with watercolour or coloured pencil, but I'm using shellac based drawing ink because I need my prints to be waterproof. It's also really vibrant and colourful, which is great. Because I've printed the colograph in blue, I'm using a yellow ink, letting it dry and then adding a magenta ink to overlap the yellow and make an orange.
I left these overnight to dry before cutting them down. These are bleed prints that will be stuck onto wine bottles, so I'm trimming them down to size using the first black print as a guide. If you're doing a more traditional edition, you can sign the front of the print with the edition number and title, and your name obviously, or sign the back if it's a bleed print.
Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to support my channel so I can continue making more of these tutorial videos, I have a Patreon account with a whole range of tier levels that you can support me at. Links for all the places you can find my work will be in the description of this video, along with some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy some of the materials that I used in this video, like etching ink or shellac flakes. Like, subscribe, share and comment if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you with a new one soon. Cheers.